Hi, welcome to Find the Answers, our tutorial series on online research at Gerstein. I'm Rita and I'm a librarian at the Gerstein Science Information Centre at the University of Toronto. In this series of tutorials, we'll present strategies for finding the information you need to solve PBL cases. We'll be working with the following case throughout the series. A young woman comes to our office complaining of uterine bleeding, pelvic pain, and mild nausea for the last two days. She's 22 years old and she's otherwise healthy. She's never been pregnant but she is sexually active and she takes oral contraceptives. Her last menstrual period was three weeks ago. So given this history and examination results, your task is to figure out what her problem may be. With the limited information that we have so far, it's best to consult tools that let you search signs and symptoms in order to narrow down the possible conditions that may be causing them. A good way to begin is to divide problem-based or case-based learning into three distinct areas. One, initial signs and symptoms that a patient presents. Two, learning some basic information about the conditions that may be causing these symptoms. Three, solving diagnosis questions like lab test results and differential diagnosis. And finally, when you know all that information, you can determine the best course of therapy based on the most compelling and recent evidence. After you've decided which one of these categories your question fits into, the next step is to pick a search tool that can help you answer that type of question. A high quality search tool should have these types of features. The tool should be comprehensive for the type of information that it covers so that you can be confident that it will answer most of your questions. For example, if you need information on drug interactions, pick a tool that provides comprehensive coverage of drugs. We'll cover this in greater detail later in this module. Second, the tool should be systematic in its approach to information. That means it should be well organized and easy to figure out. And finally, the information tool should be current. It should reflect the state of the most recent evidence and medical knowledge. It should be updated to reflect new knowledge as soon as relevant clinical articles are published. Currency is particularly important when considering the best treatment options. In academic medicine, we also prefer information tools that not only reflect the most recent evidence, but also link directly to the research if you want to see more information. This has been an introduction to solving PBL scenarios with special medical information resources at the Gerstein Science Information Center. In this tutorial, we started the process by learning about the case under consideration, and then we looked at how we can divide PBL cases into distinct areas. Join me in the next tutorial in the series where we'll look at specialized resources to help us uncover possible signs and symptoms.